Hello, good morning everybody. I'm Jess Egan, CEO and co-founder of Lapworks for Me. And I'm joined today by Leah Horwood from Harper Jones. Hi Leah. Hi, hi Jess. <laughs> How are you doing? It's good, yeah. Excited to be chatting to you today. <laughs> good, I'm excited too. Um, so Leah and I are going to be talking about, I think I'm probably right in saying you're pretty much the only entirely remote law firm, law firm I think, certainly the only one that I've, I've come across in the UK. Um, so we're going to be chatting to Leah more about that and how that works in her business. Um, just quickly before we start talking, so I run a business called That Works For Me, which was set up to bring together amazingly skilled, talented people who are mostly mums with brilliant uh, businesses in the UK. And we do that with our platform, That Works For Me. And we only work with businesses who truly understand flexible working or use flexible resource. So have if you're watching and you haven't checked that out before, then please do. Um, we have a we have two sort of different functions of the site. So one is obviously for people who are looking for flexible work, whether that be employment or freelancing work. And then on the other side, we obviously work with businesses who are, as I said, who embrace who embrace flexibility. And one of the things that we try and do is showcase businesses who are really getting it right, which is exactly what today's session is about. So we'll be talking through how Harper James embrace uh, flexible working and remote working um, and the different tools, how they overcome the challenges that lots of people kind of throw out about remote working. So we'll touch on some of those as well. So Leah, hi. Hello. <laughs> um, why don't you tell me first of all a little bit um, a, a little bit about yourself and your role at Harper James. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So um, I'm the head of talent at Harper James and I've got responsibility for our recruitment across all our practice areas and support roles. We've got lots of exciting vacancies within the business. Um, I've been with Harper James since 2017. Um, now, nationally, we're a team of approaching 90 people. When I started in 2017, probably a team of maybe 25 to 30 people nationally. Um yeah, so it's been fantastic to be part of such a disruptive, forward thinking and growing business. Yeah, I bet it has. So I think Harper James has such a strong, um, a strong culture and a really strong brand, actually, for what they're doing. So tell us, tell us why then. So what, what makes Harper James different? Um, so we're a, a national commercial law firm designed specifically to support entrepreneurial businesses from startup to scale up and beyond. Um, most of our team work remotely from home, but we do have offices in Sheffield and Birmingham and also access to meeting space in sort of main, most main sort of cities, Cambridge, okay. London, Manchester, Oxford. Um, and we're, we're growing, you know, we're hitting 7 million turnover. We've got plans to get to 20 million within five years, which is really exciting. Um, our growth over the course of the last three years has been over 40 percent. And, you know, recruitment for us is a really big driver for this accelerated phase of, of growth. Um, mm -hmm. And so, as I mentioned, you know, we've got a number of really exciting opportunities Um within the within the business and we we the, the clients that we support those entrepreneurial businesses you yeah. know start up to scale up and beyond we're really making legal services accessible and 70 percent of our revenue is generated through subscription okay we it's so i came across you guys when i it was through enterprise nation wasn't it so i won the um female startup of the year award a couple of years ago and part of that whole prize package was to was some a year's worth of free legal support with with half change which has been absolutely amazing but it's also been it's i think it's really exciting being part of a community of businesses who are sort of in the same in the same space as you and what i've i think the, the difference i always find with you guys is it feels less stuffy than other law firms, really. <laughs> if I can say that, in a good way. So I think in a, in the way that you guys kind of really get get the small business challenges that we face and all of those growth challenges, and I think the associated costs that come with it as well. You know, it's not it's not ludicrously expensive and therefore unobtainable for businesses like mine to actually be quite legally compliant, which I think is obviously obviously what you're going for. Um, so I guess along that theme of um, tra more traditional law firms, so I know of a 
a dear friend of mine who won't be named. So she trained for many, many years to become a solicitor because it's not it's not an easy career, is it, to become qualified in. Yeah. She worked crazy hours um, for lots of law firms in London. And then she had a baby, as so many of us do. And she ended up going back into... Um, Sorry, she ended up going back into law, but I think she dropped. But she ended up doing a paralegal role as opposed to the full role that she had done before. And when I kind of said why she had to take, you know, take that that job or that demotion as it was for her, she said that um, she couldn't find a, a flexible role in law that fit around having a family, and that's just not how law firms operate. And I've since heard that from from tons of different businesses. But I guess Harper James are. So what? <laughs> how come Harper James can make it work and, and other businesses aren't? So we've worked flexibly since 2014 when when Toby set up the business, and you know we've we've we do it really well. We've got a really integrated team, um, and typically our lawyers work. So, so you know we can accommodate more of a hybrid setup from our office in Birmingham if lawyers yeah. within are within that region. But typically, the majority of the team work from home with um, great flexibility. So you know that's not that's not new to us, and and we've really built an integrated working environment. You know our lawyers. They, they work as a team, they collaborate, they share ideas, they enjoy, enjoy each other's company. Um, the remote setup really allows them to work from where where and when they want. You know, they give it gives them the flexibility for what they need. We've got some team members, and I'm included in this, who need that flexibility for childcare, you know, the school runs. Um, other team members are keen, gym enthusiasts, you know, dedicated dog walkers, whatever they need the flexibility for, hobbies, work-life balance. Um, it, it is really there, and across you know all of our all of our roles, we've got sort of full time, part time, and flexible hours available. So it's it's just the way that we've always worked, and it's it's always been at the sort of core of our culture at Harper James to allow people to to work. Um, you know, in this kind of flexible remote way, which you know you quite rightly said within more traditional firms, as certainly in the past was um, typically unheard of. But you know, we we mm -hmm and encourage that and um it, it, it giving the people the flexibility giving our team the flexibility they need for whatever reason you know is replicated in terms of the the way that we can service our clients and the efficiency and and um you know the, the great quality of lawyers that we've got on our team and the services that we can provide to clients yeah. all of that flexibility contributes to providing um a really good you know a really great service and what are the so I think traditionally the one of the reasons the sort of legal sector says oh no we can't we can't facilitate remote working in particular I'm sure there are you know that I know there are some companies that can offer a little bit more flexibility but in terms of remote working I think the historic challenge has it always been around sort of case files and servicing customers and that type of thing has been my understanding. Yeah, I think those things probably tie tie in to mm. uh, more traditional firms having you know those those reasons for you know kind of maybe thinking or believing that flexible working doesn't work for them but also there's you know presenteeism which has historically always been an issue within the legal service sector you know there's really long hours you have to be sort of seen to be sat at your desk to be doing a good job um so i think you know all, all of that those the sort of politics and bureaucracy you know long inflexible hours all of that really kind of plays a part but that's everything that we've really moved away from at Harper James mm. yeah no it's so true isn't it and I think that applies I was talking to somebody in the financial services sector yesterday and we were having a really similar conversation and we were talking about the if, if you look at things from from a time perspective over the last sort of 10 20 years there's very much still been the generation of men in their sort of 50s and 60s in charge of companies but actually a lot of the work that um, you know gender di <clears throat> gender diversity at those younger tiers and they're now starting to come up so actually that sort of opens the doors a little bit for for more flexibility and for a, a wider mix of um of well all, all types of people i think at, at all levels of the organization which is which is brilliant and i guess we see that in in law as well yeah yeah for sure and you know we we have um 
we, we, we've got a lovely team of people. We've worked really hard at building a relaxed, integrated culture at Harper mm-hmm. James. You know, everybody has got a job to do. Everyone works really hard and their, their contribution to the success of the business to date and, and, and also, you know, what they're doing to play a part in the continued growth of the business is valued. And, um, you know, that's not determined by the hours that people do or needing yeah. flexibility or the fact that they have, you know, child child care you know as i say i flip i fit my my day very flexibly around my son um his after school clubs and general kids you know sort of social social events and you know what that that calendar is like um that 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 people need in that flexibility in their day-to-day um you know it it, it, as i say it's it's just part of how we work at harper james and has has always been you mentioned specifically presenteeism, which we know is is a is a, one of the huge kind of barriers to to remote working in particular. How how have you got your guys overcome that? So if you've got a a team where the manager might only see them, I don't know, once a month, what what sort of things in place are there to protect against that? And how how would one of your line managers kind of say, "Oh, I, I know they're they're doing a good job." So. Is the way that our lawyers work is, you know, is really integrated. And mm. our, our, as I say, the, our lawyers are not sort of sat at home or our team, you know, not just lawyers, our team are not sat at home working in isolation. It's very collaborative. And we've we've built that support mechanism over the last eight, eight years to ensure that people feel support and they, you know, they are supported in terms of their day to day, their day to day role, um, particularly, you know, maybe lawyers at the more junior end who require um, that sort of supervision and mentorship, you know, we've we've con- we've continued to build the business and put those uh, those sort of measures in place to be able to support and encourage that development. So, you know, people are, are regularly in in touch with their their line managers, um, mm. and you know, ev- everyone's really accessible on Teams. We use all of the technology available to us to ensure that we you know maintain that consistent collaboration across the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I, I'm based in South Wales, for example. Um, so um, I was probably one of the one of the only people within the business, sort of f- furthest south at, w- at one stage. We, we've grown now considerably, but you know, the the, the integration amongst the team has 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 always been very um, very collaborative. And as we've continued to grow and have opportunities within the business across different levels of experience, you know, we've we've put that structure into place to continue to to support that integration. Um, and then, as I say, those kind of quarterly meetings that which which quickly come around that we that we get in the diary purely from sort of social perspective when the firm gets together. It's always nice to have that you know that that that's that sort of touch point and catch up with everybody. Um, and then our, our the, the teams within the business that sort of sat the practice areas separately also get together for you know away away days. So um, okay. there's lots that we do to maintain that collaboration. So how often, just at, again, because I think it's interesting for other businesses talking, and I know I know some businesses say, oh, right, well, we'll get everybody together at nine o'clock in the morning and, you know, we'll, we'll have a chat about our days and then we'll speak to everyone again at four o'clock, which personally I think is, is, quite, is quite a restrictive way to do things. So how often are sort of people talking? Are they, are they daily team meetings, you know, popped up with monthly away days or how, how does yeah. that happen in practice? It's- yeah, sure. I mean, t- different teams have different have their own have their own way of um, managing that that sort of integration. Um, but yeah, most teams kind of if they if they're not on a kind of a sort of collective team meeting every day, they are. You know, there are touch points within within teams at you know various points um, sort of du- during during the day. So generally, people try and get on a teams meeting. You know, as frequently as they as they can, but but also accommodating you know diaries and, and work commitments and everything else. It's just about having a sen- a sensible approach to mm. managing you know managing diaries, managing. Um, and managing that integration so people feel feel supported so what do you do in what do you do in your team how often do you do you guys speak constantly i imagine 
Yeah, so I mean, within so within recruitment is uh, myself and also Megan, who's actually based quite local um, to me. But I work with you know multiple people within yeah. within the business who are all involved in the recruitment process at you know maybe different stages. So you know, to- Toby and I work very closely together, as I do with some of the sort of more sort of senior managers within the team as well, who are all involved in the, in the process. Um, I have weekly teams meetings booked in catch-ups with you know various people across different practice areas so that we can touch base on recruitment Mm -hmm. um you know and it just keeps that communication um flowing and but 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 equally everyone's accessible if you drop someone a message and say have you got five minutes to chat about this um you know people make time for you and um as i say the the kind of individual teams and practice areas also have their own way of of maintaining that integration among among the department yeah i always wonder about that balance of and i guess because you guys have done it since day one it's how you've always always worked but i think for some businesses that perhaps went remote during um covid they then say oh you know i i sit on i sit on um video calls all day but i almost wonder if if that's that's because they've sort of replicated what they did in the office where they were in meetings all day and they've literally moved it online as mm-hmm. opposed to yeah. Yeah, do we you know do we, do we need to be sat in all those meetings or all, all talking constantly it's just an interesting not necessarily one for you to answer i suppose but just i'm always curious about whether people have sort of taken the opportunity to completely rethink that or yeah you know, i think the, 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 the dynamic there as well and something to consider there is you know um I, I completely get how that might that might seem you know going from a being in meetings you know in an office environment back to back to switching that online but the way that we all work at Harper James is so flexible and there's 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 so much this you know there's so much flexibility in terms of managing your day you know as I say for me personally all that involves is um you know logging on in the morning you know just catching up on a few emails doing the school run you know mm-hmm. getting the lunch boxes ready doing the school run coming back you know, um, before you know it is three o'clock and you you know you're off on the school run again so the way that people manage their time at Harper James, and you know, that's personally for me, as I say, for kind of needing that flexibility for fam- for family and you know, commitments. Um, but other members of the team have, you know, got it for for their own personal interests, you know, hobbies. Um, as I say, we've got some keen gym enthusiasts, so um, there's there's a lot of fluidity in terms of how people kind of manage manage their you know their their time. Yeah. I am. Um, I was absolutely bright red about 10 minutes ago. So I'd, I've just decided I'm trying to get back into shape after the fourth baby. And I went to a gladiator camp. And literally, if you looked at my Instagram, I put a picture of me up looking like a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit pinker than normal <laughs> that's why i'd like to say i'm a keen gin and gin gin enthusiast i'd slip on the tongue gym enthusiast too i think <laughs> i'm not sure enthusiast is the right word um, <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the culture side of things so again one of the sort of barriers that lots of businesses will actually throw up is how could if everybody's kind of working independently and you've touched on this a bit already but if everyone's working independently how can you have sort of a sense of company culture and it's interesting I've obviously heard you talk about integration communication flexibility which are obviously kind of three sort of values at the center but how do you like really bring about how would you describe the Harper James culture and how do you make sure you kind of really nurture the, the positives of it? Yeah, sure. It, and is that's really it's really important and it's something that we, you know, prioritize and mm-hmm. uh, we've really created an environment um, again, completely non non traditional in terms of like legal service sector yeah. in this in this respect. It's completely free of politics, bureaucracy, red tape. You know, there are no egos. We've got a lovely team of people, a great team of people who are all playing a really important part in the you know success and continued success of the business. Um, and, and that feels great. You know, it feels great to be part of something that is so forward think- thinking, mm-hmm. innovative, ambitious. And at the same time, I'm working alongside a lovely team of people. Um, and you know the way that we primarily work you know remotely we in order to sort of maintain that culture there is lots we've had to do lots as I just mentioned you know from a remote working perspective to keep that integration so you know as I say the kind of regular catch-ups on teams some of our practice um, some of our departments have uh, water cooler chats where they would just catch up and you know have a chat about generally anything they would around a, a water cooler um, you, know, you have you have formal like formalized water 
to call a chat to you almost or... yeah yeah some of our practice areas will put that time in the diary then the, you know the teams will jump on and, and have their water cooler chat and you know get to just catch up really and just you know get that in, that interaction so um you know it's, it's really important to us um that that we re really kind of ma maintain and, and continue to um continue to maintain that that environment that is completely free of politics and bureaucracy and red tape because you know there is a lot of synergy there in terms of why people have joined our our team for yeah. that reason, you know wanting to move away from you know the politics and and and, and everything else that is maybe more traditionally associated with more traditional firms yeah you've talked a little bit about tools and, and teams in particular obviously yeah. be, being a big enabler and there I, I think everyone again during covid sort of became aware of this whole new raft of different tools that were available and i i mean i'm the same as you so i for a long time worked with three or four people in my team that i've never even met face to face so we you we use everything online but what are your kind of favorite tools that you guys use to keep everyone sort of working along you know working along the same lines and keeping track of things yeah sure so um technology is an area that we're always investing in to ensure mm -hmm. that we're ahead of the market and to make um working as productive and enjoyable as possible from a remote working perspective um, so what, what from the outset we implemented um, mobile device management software and also bespoke workflow management tools and a legal document management system that was really built to enable collaboration in a remote working environment. So that was really important that we had something that could support this way of, of working. And, you know, as I say, we're always investing in our technology to, to make things better and more efficient. Um, we've always onboarded our clients entirely, you know, sort of digitally, but we have to evolve and, and adopt that process, sort of use of new biometric facial recognition technology and um, use of developments in um, open banking and some current projects that we're working on as well include a bespoke practice management system that is, you know, designed from the ground up, completely tailored to to HJ's way of working and some, also some um, automated work allocation software using AI. So there are there are always improvements that we're looking to make to support you know, remote working and make it as efficient as possible. Um, and in terms of the, the sort of what, what we use within the team, so we significantly have invested in our own technology to give us this scalable platform for this next phase of our growth now. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone gets a new Lenovo i7 laptop with a range of accessories. And um, we, uh, as I say, use sort of mobile device management software. So our team don't have to worry about, you know, it, it being unreliable, logging in and being continually mm -hmm. supported out. Um, we're as paper free as possible. We use Microsoft Forms and Power Apps to digitize and automate processes that are more traditionally done using paper records. Um, but we've also got, a, you know, our team in Birmingham um, also deal with anything that is sort of hard copy physically. You know, they scan that, send that to the relevant team members. Okay. But yeah, our, our legal document management system was really built with remote working in mind. So that really does enable collaboration across the, across the team. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And I, I just I, I just think it's another example of things can be done if you really want to put the effort in. You know, if yeah. you really want to enable remote working, there are ways of doing it. It just takes a bit of education, which I guess if you, when you have new starters that join, it's a case of sort of like you would with anything else, I guess, just educating them on the on new processes and things. Well, um, just on the on the subject of new starters. So what does the first week look like for somebody joining Harper James? How do you kind of get them into like your way of doing things? Yeah, sure. So wherever possible, we can do remote inductions, but wherever possible, we do like to do the inductions from our Birmingham office if geographically yeah. that's like more convenient for, for people really. So, you know, everyone receives a warm welcome from a lovely team. And um, as I say, we try and do that induction face to face. And um, they, as part of that initial sort of first day, they receive an introduction to the firm full IT induction and then during the course of the first week we make we set up various teams meetings with other members of the of the team as part of 
that that intro. So, you know, across finance, client services, business development, marketing. Um, and then we also arrange a sort of introductory team lunch um, for, for everybody that, that comes on board. So, you know, it's, it's that, that first week is really just, you know, embracing them, give, give, giving them the sort of um, the introduction to the firm, making sure they're fully supported with IT and then following up with any, you know, issues that they, they may have there and just welcome them, welcome, welcoming everyone into the team and, you know, kind of introducing them to, to, different, to different team members. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting that you do that face to face because it is there's no doubt that it's easier if you have met somebody face to face. It's then much easier to do video chats and things afterwards, isn't it? So I quite like yeah. the I like the like admission and up upfrontness of that to say actually let's you know, let's meet face to face, let's kind of get lots of those intros out of the way and then yeah. we'll get it helps as well what we've noticed is from an IT perspective you know it's it's just far easier to be in the office with Sean who's our IT manager and if you've got any issues he's on hand you know (laughs) but he's also very accessible on teams I I might add you know I'm I'm, I'm frequently um, frequently bothering him but yeah it's it's, you know it just it just makes sense to to have that support and you know and just just welcome people in, in the way that we like to welcome them you know have a so yeah. we arrange a lunch for them on the day and then as, as 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 quickly as we can within that those first couple of weeks get a sort of introductory team lunch arranged with um whatever sort of department they, they're yeah. going into really no nice i think that's great um and so the other the other big challenge i guess that people always throw up about remote working and i you know you hear this a lot in the press and everything is all you know what about new people who are training what about youngsters yeah that are joining the company for the first time well i know that i know that i have some thoughts on this but before i share that is what are your what do you what do you guys do about it so we, you know, across the firm, we our lawyers have access to everything they would have ha- have access to from a support perspective and to a more traditional, you know, model, if you like. So we, you know, provide training in order for our lawyers to maintain their CPD points. Um, we've uh, also, you know, kind of we've got varying as opportunities as i as i mentioned across all levels ex- of experience that are really capable of all of evolving as 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 people evolve within the business so you know from a training perspective we have to we have to uh, support that so i think what we kind of see um i suppose is more kind of commonly talked about is maybe at the more lawyers at the more junior end that are looking to sort of accelerate their career you know how do they do that from a remote working perspective um and I, you know the answer the answer to that is that we have a really you know great experienced team of lawyers who um can can sort of act as a mentor and support and encourage their development within the business you know this is a role that isn't restricted by level of pqe and mm-hmm. we're not particularly hierarchical firm you know everyone's contribution is valued regardless of their level of experience so um for lawyers at the more sort of junior junior end um you know they would be working very closely with an experienced mentor and get access to you know really great quality work that, that as i say isn't restricted by their level of experience um and we've got you know our heads of department are there to sort of always listen to and identify any sort of training needs within within the, within the business so if there is an area of training that people have a particular interest in or feel that they could benefit from um you know we've got an open door policy in terms of those conversations yeah. and also you know we're, we're here to really it's in our interest to support and encourage development what what is a really great example um of how we do that is our legal assistance within the business so so we've got a number of legal assistants based from our office in birmingham and when they when they kind of come to us generally they would have completed their legal practice course and they're looking to gain you know experience um within an area of, of law that they've got a genuine interest in sort of qualifying mm-hmm. in. So we, we we really encourage and support their development and they get access to great quality work. And for the right people, they can then go on to sort of progress to training contracts. So it's almost like a pre-training contract. You know, they're working with really experienced lawyers, getting access to great quality work. Um, and a really good example of how that has worked well is one of our IP lawyers, Gemma. So she was a legal assistant with us for a couple mm-hmm. of years 
progressed to a training contract and now she's just over one year's qualified, I think. And we've got other people within the business at the moment who are um, kind of on their, tra- you know, within their training contracts and have progressed that way. So um, training development, you know, within the business is something that we are, you know, really kind of passionate about making sure that we're um, supporting people to their full, full potential. Um, and it's in our interest for people to, you know, grow and develop with us as we continue to grow as a business. Yeah, I think uh, so. For, for me on the on the training thing, I mean, you just articulated it really well, but there, if somebody's learning how to do something, what you tend to have is a lesson and then an application of what you've learned and then a review of what you've done to make sure it fits with what you've learned. And I feel like those different those different areas can be done at different points. So obviously for me, the, the most critical part in all of that is the the review bit. And I guess if you're doing that with a more senior or a more more kind of expert, you know, somebody with more experience in one particular sector, yes, that can be done face to face, or yes, that can that can be done remotely. And I, and again, if you know, I guess in a culture like yours where you know that it's perfectly okay to you know, chat to someone on Teams or to message them and say, you know, can I can I pick up the phone and, and ask a question? Is it is it that different to you know being sat next to someone at a desk and having to sort of ask them ask them all the time? I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I, personally, I don't think it is, and particularly mm-hmm. knowing the way that we work within the business and you know how approachable and how and how accessible people are. Um, you know, we've got it. We've 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 got a really great sort of supervision structure from that perspective for yeah. kind of more, more, more junior members of the team. Um, and, you know, as I say, making use of technology and, and, and how um, we kind of really factor that into our day-to-day w- way of working. Um, to me, to be completely honest, I feel that it's just far more efficient. You know, if you're in the office yeah. and you're dragged into several meetings throughout the course of the day, uh, you know, and I remember this from person, personal experience, being, a, you know, a junior team member needs Needing supervision in order to get something progressed and your advisor your mentor is you know kind of pulled in several different areas and in and out of meetings in the office you know so I think the way that we do things is to just sort of structure that time aside to to really take a look at those things and and make sure that people are getting the support that you know that they need um in order to develop that's it's in our yeah. interest it's a really good point, isn't it? Actually, kind of, where do you do most of your learning? Is it observing people in meetings, in which case that doesn't matter whether you're observing them sort of online or in person, or actually the majority of the time where you sat at your desk while the person you were learning from was off in meetings for seven hours a day and you were kind of grabbing their time to ask questions? I think that's really, I think it's a really good, it's a really good point, isn't it? And I, if, for me, it just feels like another one of those challenges that, that people, people throw up. Yeah, but I think if, if people if people within the business demonstrate that they're keen to learn and get involved in different aspects of the business, mm-hmm. you know, like Toby would just absolutely encourage that, as would the heads of practice area, you know. So so where we can get people involved in kind of learning and developing by just observing on those, you know, team meetings, for example, which is, is, is you know, I, I can sort of vouch for how that's how I really learned lots, lots about the business, just kind of listening, you know, and observing Toby on meetings and, and, and some of the senior members of the management team across, you know, different um, different vacancies that we're recruiting for in areas that perhaps I, I didn't know much about, you know, so that's that's replicated really across across the firm. Yeah, I think it's great. It really sounds like it is. And that whole point about it having kind of dedicated time, I think if anything, in certainly for my office days, that's the bit that was lost the most because that was probably the easiest thing to sort of can when when things got busy. But yeah, yeah. Great. Well, um, so my my obvious my whole modus operandi, if that's the right word, is that flexible and remote working means better stronger more improved diversity for everybody of every protective characteristic because it makes work more accessible so in the hope that you're absolutely going to prove <laughs> prove that theory and prove all the research yeah. <laughs> what does diversity look like and how could you 
So I'm pleased to say that we have a 50-50 male to female ratio within Amazing. the business. Yeah, At yeah. Across all levels of the business. Yeah, yeah. And Fantastic. you know, we're a re- we're a real real people orientated firm with a with a strong culture, as I mentioned throughout this. You know, I keep saying it's a lovely team of people, but that's because <laughs> it genuinely is, you know. And our, our culture and values are really determined to provide opportunities for everyone to succeed within the business, you know, and we're open to talent in all of its forms um, we we are kind of currently at the moment exploring and and have had success in terms of recruiting within um sort of apprenticeship schemes within within the business um you know we, we've got a number of um opportunities ac- across the business where that diversity will you know is really important to us and we're, we're keen to build a diverse team and um you know we can provide opportunities to everybody regardless of you know race religion age gender sexual orientation or disability um yeah. and we know that being a law firm you know we know that we need to strive in all of that to achieve greater diversity in all aspects across the business so it's it's you know something that we um and it and it sounds it sounds like you're achieving that as well so if you yeah. look across the protected characteristics are you comfortable with where you are now or do you think you've got you've got further to go I think that we um, there there are you can all, there are always ways that you can improve. You can con- yeah. always continuously um, you know a- adapt and improve. And um, but I'm I'm really proud of the, the, you know the sort of culture that we build, the values that we hold. It's completely reflected throughout everybody within the business. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's there's always ways to continuously improve those things. Amazing. Um, Leah, that was that was absolutely amazing. I think you've I, I really appreciate your openness because I think you've talked a lot there about different tools and about the way you do things. And I, I always really appreciate a business who are happy to be that open and kind of share share everything that they do for the purposes of supporting other businesses. So thank you. I massively appreciate that. Um, if anybody wanted to ask you any more any more questions or find out a bit more about specifics of anything you said what would be the best way to get in touch with you yeah no we you know i just we we really kind of welcome an informal chat if anybody's got any questions or queries that's generally how our sort of process kicks off um so people can you know get me on email link drop me a message on linkedin my my details are on the contact details are on the website um and yeah you know it's 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 as simple as an informal chat with me initially to find out more about you know more more about everybody that we're speaking to um and take taking the opportunity just to tell them all about harper james all the great things that we've got going on how we work and just sort of run through some of the some of the things that i've mentioned today really jess so that's generally how our process kicks off a really informal chat brilliant okay fab and the is obviously available on linkedin perhaps we'll share her linkedin um, profile across the uh different channels that we're live on today um, thank you once again, Nia. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you to everybody that's watched us live uh, or if you're watching us on playback. Thank you for making it this far. Um, really hope it's been a useful session for you. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Leah. Thanks, Jess.